left-wing politics and left-wing ideology is becoming more and more like a very dangerous religion okay very dangerous and that's the reason why people are always speaking out about it all these all these reasonable left-wing people who are just like why you keep focusing on all these uh college kids they, they can't affect nothing yes they can you're wrong they can and they are and it, it seems that it doesn't matter how much visual proof is put in front of your face you just don't want your team to take the hit from breaking with these um fanatics you think you're breaking with the fanatics with things like justice democrats but no because look at what happened to the two founders of the damn movement they got axed why because of some things that one of the founders uh chank uger had said years and years ago in a in a blog post or a, or a news article post or whatever and they axed them for that because it goes against their ideology of women over everything you can't say anything bad about women you can't say anything like a normal dude would say about women like yo i love i love those huge tits like you say some shit like that crucified crucified and uh kyle kalinsky he stepped down out of uh, in protest to that decision which is commendable but still it's like he the, can't speak bad about justice democrats can't do that if you speak bad about them then then that that brings a hit to your team that you're trying to get into the political office to take over the democratic party so yeah and it, it don't think that it's not completely infesting justice democrats neither because take a look at uh what's her name um <clears throat> uh, alexandria cortez where ben shapiro had challenged her to a debate and she's like just like catcalling these men feel entitled to us and it's like wow wow you could have just said like i'm not running against you i don't want to debate you fuck you whatever now of course you would have looked like a hypocrite and you still do but you would look like less of a hypocrite than you do now because you already said that oh right right wing people are afraid to debate me and then one comes to debate you and you're like oh he's cat calling me come on the fuck on <clears throat> that's identity politics that's fucking left wing radical feminist ideology and it's fucking garbage they keep saying that everything's toxic if you want to talk about stuff that's toxic left wing ideological feminism is fucking toxic left wing ideological feminism don't care about due process it don't care about innocent until proven guilty and you just seen that firsthand with this judge Kavanaugh thing now I don't give a damn whether you truly <clears throat> um, think that uh, Christine Ford's testimony was credible or not that doesn't matter there was still no cooperating evidence so it's still her word against his and we can't we can't destroy somebody's career or somebody's life or convict somebody on just that he said she, she said even though that's happened before like I brought up Brian Banks in one of my previous videos so yeah no credible evidence but you still want to go in on somebody with no credible evidence that's feminism that's feminism today and that comes from adults like the ones you saw directing those groups of kids with that chant getting into colleges and indoctrinating them into all of this crazy bullshit that that's just a fact there's, there's just, that's not opinion that's a fact as, as Kyle Kalinske would say so as uh, the the regular like left-wing Democrats they're not gonna do anything because they're opportunists like Christine Kirsten Gillibrand and and <clears throat> Mazierono and all these people they don't actually give a fuck about women or any of this type of shit they're just opportunists they see where the wind blows they're like we're the party of women's issues so we gotta do this we gotta be like yeah women rah 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 and fuck men and all this other type of shit regardless until the wind changes just like Hillary Clinton did with gay marriage when the wind changes then they're ch they'll change so you justice democrats you guys are trying to like change the party from within take it over blah 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 disconnect yourself from this fucking radical um feminist ideology radical socialist ideology or you're gonna fucking fall on your face you're gonna fall on your face <clears throat> because you you see what's happening like the shit that y'all doing is not just pissing off right wingers it's pissing off people in the center and it's pissing off some people on the left too they're like hold on hold on hold on hold on where we're not trying to bring the country back to the damn inquisition we're not trying to bring it back to the damn salem witch trials here we're just trying to get the policies that we think is going to help working people in 
So y'all need to be like, we're just trying to get these policies in. Let's forget about all this radical ideology type stuff. If y'all do that, I think y'all would soar <clears throat> uh, politically. Like, you still wouldn't convince, like, a Ben Shapiro or a Steven Crowder, but, like, independent in the center type people, you would get way more of them if you would drop this fucking radical ideology type shit. Feminism is your, it's, it's, it's like your fucking malignant mole that you got on the side of your cheek right here. So you might have, like, an extremely handsome face like mine's, but this mole right here is the one thing that's just fucking it all up. And you keep trying to give speeches, but the camera just keeps zooming in on that mole. And everybody's like, ugh, 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 ugh. and you know, your, your message doesn't really get through. That's what feminism is <laughs> in, in your uh, up and coming movement right now. You'd cut that shit off. You worked in the mines yourself, huh? Yes, I'm a retired UNWA miner, and I never dreamed that I'd get to thank you personally myself to, for the bill that you have co sponsored and uh, how the Senate Bill 175. The Miners Protection Act, which I'm one of those miners that will lose. I think Bernie Sanders would lose in a landslide to Donald Trump. Why'd you vote for Donald Trump? Uh, basically because he wasn't Hillary. You, would you have supported Senator Sanders if he was an army? Yes, I would have. I think he's the worst candidate in a general election. I think it's amazing that you're in Vermont and you care more about West Virginia than ever there's a lot of activity around trying to stop Bernie Sanders. You have to excite people that did not come out in 2016. Young people, independents, typical non-voters. Without that passion, Social Security. In the past, you proposed a freeze to it. No, I didn't propose a freeze. When I argued that we should freeze federal spending, I meant Social Security as well. Once, twice, tried it a third time, and I tried it a fourth time. Entitlements ever be on your plate? Uh, at some point, they will be. It's about the influence of money. That's corruption. Donors and not provide health care to all. You could dig up dirt on every single human being that's ever existed. You can't find very many with Bernie. We need single chair on the table now. He's been insanely consistent his entire life. This man has moved the dialogue about what is possible in this country. The whole country is talking about Medicare for all. All the things that Bernie Sanders is campaigning on are things that Americans used to have, but they were taken away from us just to give the top 1% the giant tax cuts that they're enjoying today. This is why we call him America's dad. We are behind every country pretty nearly in Europe in this matter of medical care for our citizens. Who is more electable nationally? And take a look at this. CNN now projects Joe Biden is the winner in Michigan. 125 delegates are at stake. Joe Biden is the Democratic presidential primary winner in Michigan. So far tonight, he has won Michigan, Mississippi, and Missouri. Three important states, very significant wins for the former vice president, Jake. You lost. What's good, everybody? It's another great day in the land of politics. So what happened? If we played backroom politics better, it would have been interesting to see how it would have unfolded if, as soon as Biden had that rally with Mayor Pete and Amy Klobuchar, and, you know, they're bragging about how Biden's the way to go and we're endorsing him and isn't he wonderful and these are all people who heavily criticized him previously, but all of a sudden now they love him. What if we countered that with doing everything we could behind the scenes to get Andrew Yang, Tulsi Gabbard, Tom Steyer, and, um, and Elizabeth Warren to endorse us? Because at the very least, you blunt the media momentum in that scenario. You make it so that there's an asterisk next to every single fawning segment about Biden. Oh my God, look at how great he is. Look at how many endorsements he got. What if they had to add at the end of every fawning segment or every fawning sentence on these networks? Yeah, and also, by the way, um, Bernie racked up more endorsements from other people who are running. Even if those names aren't bigger or as big as the establishment ones, who cares? At least do something to blunt that momentum. 
an Elizabeth Warren endorsement or Elizabeth Warren dropping out prior to Super Tuesday and endorsing Bernie or joining as a VP or whatever the hell it might be, all of those things could have very clearly and strongly changed the dynamic of the race and blunted that momentum. Because remember guys, Biden was dead in the water uh, after Nevada. He was, wasn't even finishing, he was finishing way back in the pack. Nevada he came in second to be fair, but in Iowa, New Hampshire, he was donezo, he was gone skis. So this feeling of him as inevitable wasn't always the case. So if we were able to go tit for tat better with the establishment, I think that would have helped. And then the fourth thing is, and this one I think there's gonna be a lot of debate on the left about. We either need to, moving forward, the left either needs to find a way to get corporate media to not hate us, or we need to actually build alternatives that are big enough to compete and set the narrative. Because I, I hate to say this, new media, myself included, we just aren't big enough yet to control the narrative or compete with old media. We're just not. We fell abysmally short. In many ways, this race was old media versus new media, and us new media people got our asses kicked. Nah, I don't think that's what it was. I think it was that the moderate and older voters saw this. The United States is running concentration camps on our southern border, and that is exactly what they are. They are concentration camps. The fact that concentration camps are now an institutionalized practice in the home of the free is extraordinarily disturbing. And said, Here's the thing, not everyone thinks the same way you do. And just because they think differently on how to allocate government funding, that doesn't make them some evil fascist. And if the Republican Party agrees with Donald Trump, and they almost always do 100% of the politicians, then call them what they are. You are bigots. And by the way, if you vote with them, you're, you're a liar. A bigots. You're a liar. Okay, no, you're a bigot. You're a liar. You're a bigot if you're You're a liar. You see this? You counter strike. You're a liar. You not tolerate bigotry in this country. Muslims are you're 100% a liar. American. So don't degrade my president or his wife. Well, Senator, okay. I will, and when I get do here, not do that. Kick his oh, no, ass. Do not. This is a forum where we are debating the issues, and if I don't agree with Trump, I'm an American, and I will say that, and you will stand down. And I will say what I want to say. Right now. here. Yes, I do. You guys claim to be all about the policies, which the polls show are popular within your party, but then you say dumb shit like this. Really pushing providers out. And this? Past year, I realized, my, 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 are they obsessed with our bodies, how we talk, how we look, what we stand for? I mean, this type of policing of our bodies is so interconnected to all the social justice movements all around the country. I represent the third poorest congressional district in the country. This issue is an economic justice issue. This issue is a racial justice issue. expect people to take you seriously? I mean, because everyone agrees with you, right? Saying your movement is full of authoritarian ideologues is just a straw man. Those are just a bunch of college kids who can't do anything, right? Oh, 
right? Because there won't be anyone indoctrinated into this psycho cult that, you know, graduates and I don't know, maybe goes into politics. Honestly, it sounds almost so silly to say, but there's a lot of restaurants that are feeling the pain of racism, uh, where people are literally not patroning Chinese restaurants. Um, they're not patroning Asian restaurants because of just straight up racism around the coronavirus. So um, if we want to defeat capitalism, we are going to need a party that will organize working people to fight for the demands that we want and to win socialism. Thank you so much. Uh, quick point of privilege, quick point of personal privilege. Um, yes. Um, guys, uh, first of all, James Jackson, Sacramento, he, him. I just want to say, can we please keep the chatter to a minimum? I'm one of the people who's very, very prone to sensory overload. There's a lot of whispering and chatter going on. It's making it very difficult for me to focus. Please, can we just, I know it's, we're all fresh and ready to go, but can we please just keep the chatter to a minimum? It's affecting my ability to focus. Thank you. Thank you, comrade. Okay, is there a speaker against name, chapter, pronoun? Privilege, point of personal privilege. Yes. Please do not use gendered language to, to address everyone. Bernie hasn't dropped out yet because Joe Biden has obviously become mentally deficient. We hold these truths to be self-evident. All men and women created by the goal, you know the, you know the thing. So if he can get enough people to see that, then he might be able to turn things around. But the fact remains that winning because the voters realize your opponent is mentally stunted isn't really the best kind of victory. I know there are some of you who feel some type of way about receiving advice from people outside of your movement, but there are already people within the progressive movement who realize you guys need to detach yourselves from the crazies. Unfortunately, the leadership continues to promote them for election even after being booted from said leadership because of the ideology created by said crazies. Oh well, what are you gonna do? Y'all have a good one. Peace. Oh and y'all fucked. And turn, turn this primary from a campaign that's about negative attacks into one about what we're for. Because we cannot get re-elected. We cannot win this re-election. Excuse me, we can only re-elect Donald Trump.